Hi y'all, my name is Narelle Yeo. I teach voice and stagecraft at the Sydney Conservatorium of Music. And I'm so excited to talk to you tonight about your singing performances and how you can get a little bit more out of them. Singing is the greatest thing, uh, I'm biased. Um, it's the only instrument you can carry with you wherever you are. And I've trained in all styles of Western music, from opera to music theatre to jazz and pop. And they're all valid, amazing forms of singing. And it just depends what suits your voice and your personality as to which one you go into. But having taught a bunch of HSC students over the years and also professionals and university students, I've seen a few tricks that you can use in your school performances that you might want to know about. Um, a lot of people think that having a good voice is enough. Um, one of the hard things about the singing world is that it's a visual art form as well. And so the whole of who you are is expressed in a song. So you need to make sure you're curating yourself as well as your voice. And the first thing I'd advise you to do is get a couple of people in your life who you really trust, who work in the area of singing that you really love. And you can get some great advice from them. But I've got three C's I'm going to give you today. And that is composure, content and capacity. And these three things will mean that whoever you're performing for in the next little while will be more impressed than they would have already been. So in terms of composure, I see a lot of students perform without using great posture. It's really important the impression you make with the instrument that you have inside you. And that instrument runs off your spine and your skeletal system and then all the muscles um, around your diaphragm are assisting you of course to breathe. So I want you to feel like uh, from the top of your head up into the roof there's something pulling you in that direction and then from your heels into the floor there's something pulling you that way. The other way to think about it is the base of your spine going into your cerebellum here and also your tailbone that both those things are pulling away from each other. If you hold yourself up like that, then your diaphragm is also able to move more freely because um, your ribs are expanded, your spine's nice and long. And that, of course, helps because singing works on the breath. So your composure also relates to how you look for whatever it is you're singing on stage. So how you dress, how you walk onto the stage, what kind of shoes you wear. And some of those are based on some rules of the kind of genre that you're working in. So the rules are different depending what kind of song you're singing. And if you want to break those rules, you can certainly do that. But make sure you know them first. So different forms of music have more or less movement and more or less formal uh, approach to what you wear. And just think about it and make your decisions based on knowledge rather than a lack of knowledge. Um, in general, when you're on stage, you're trying to have your energy match the amount of energy that's in the audience. So if you have a panel of five or a panel of three, the energy that you present on stage needs to be bigger than the energy of those three people. And that includes the way you hold yourself and the way you dress often it's a little bit more elevated than it would be just for general life. Um, so that is your composure. The second thing is the content. So pick an amazing song. There are amazing songs in every genre. Sometimes the lyric is incredible, the text is incredible. Um, it can either be poetic or it can be a narrative text and I'll talk about that in a second. Sometimes just the music's amazing even if the text isn't. And sometimes there's no text in singing as well. But generally there's text. So you are, you are charged with the responsibility of getting that narrative message across, the narrative arc that starts somewhere and ends somewhere else, or a huge complex emotion which is expressed in a poetic text. Either way, either of those kinds of texts 
require you to show not just one feeling or emotion. And I find that in some school performances, you find that people exhibit a generalized emotion. And that's not good enough to take your audience on a journey. So you've got, um, in a narrative text, you can often use movement. And the movement's often a little bit prescribed. For example, if you want to go from, um, from say, the songs about loss, uh, there might be a journey to get to loss. You might first, in the first verse or in the first part of the song, you might talk about who that person or thing was and that might bring you a lot of happiness and joy. And then there might be an incident and then there might, you might describe loss. And there's, that narrative journey is up to you to present in all its details, just like you're opening a flower. The same with a poetic text. Um, and in some ways it's a little harder with a poetic text because it's generally focusing around detailed emotions. But what you should do for yourself is create your own narrative within that poetic text. So that, or at least your own ideas that you've drawn from your own life or something you've seen or heard or felt that inform what you're trying to get across to us. It's really important that your audience understands or comprehends the content that you're delivering, the message that you're delivering. So we don't have to know your detailed inner life in order to get that because we make our own story so long as you believe it. You need to believe the story that you're telling and the only way you can do that is doing your homework. Find out if it's in the context of a show or even an album, you need to find out what happened just before you sing and what happens after you sing. You need to understand everything about the character. You need to have all that backstory sorted out or if it's a pop song, you need to understand the context in which the composer wrote that song so that you can get deep inside what is the song really saying. And it's fine if you break the rule of the composer and you get something else out of the song in the end. But that detailed work is the work that you need to do in order to make that content comprehensible to the person watching and hearing you. The very last thing and the most important thing is I find a lot of young singers choose repertoire because they love the song, not because it shows off their own capacity. So what is your capacity? What is something amazing about you? And trust me, there'll be something because singing is so diverse. There's every kind of voice type. There's every kind of style. There's every kind of message that different people are bringing to their performances. So what makes you special? Maybe you have beautiful floated high notes that make you sound like a bird. Find some repertoire that shows that off, that's really expressive, that might be about nature or might be about um, uh, being light and, and beautiful and free. Or you might have some really brassy, big, round, dark, rich colors in your low that's super jazzy or super bluesy. Find repertoire that supports that. Or you might be a person that, that exhibits emotions or fragility in a really beautiful, simple way. Find repertoire that does that for you. Whatever it is about you that the, pe the couple of people that you trust to talk to you about your music have said, oh, that's a fabulous thing about you. You need to lean into that skill. It doesn't mean you don't work on the things that you're less um, advanced at. But if you've got something that's special about you, which you do, find out what it is and lean towards that. Find repertoire that really helps your capacity to show. So those three things, how you hold yourself in space, how you decide to hold yourself based on the song that you're singing is really, really important. If you have to fake it till you make it on that one, if you have self-doubt that means you, you sing, um, with low posture, fake it. Pop it up for when you sing and eventually it'll become part of your routine for singing. The second thing is how are you going to get that content across to us? How are you going to tell the detailed, really beautiful journey that, that the song takes? If you've got a, a pop song with a whole bunch of repeated um, lines in it, repeated chorus, 
every single time you say that line, you need to be able to come up with a different reason for saying it. That kind of homework is really, really important, even in a repetitive song. And the very last thing is, what is it about you that's so amazing? Make sure you show that in your repertoire. I hope that's been really helpful. I thought I'd finish with a little, uh, part of a little song that I really like, which is a Tom Waits song called Shiver Me Timbers. And you can judge whether I use any of those three C's. Thank you.